something was going to happen. Something wonderful. G'day fans and welcome to another exciting episode of Talk Nerdy to Me. Unlike last week where zero people had signed in at the very start of the show, we've already got someone joined in right this very millisecond and there will be others uh, joining us very, very soon. Yes, 1974. So it was a very good year in 1974. MPS, please take us off to 1974 because I we need to get off this game and stuff. Let's go. Go, go, go. Uh, 1974. What do we have in... We had a lot of stuff happening in 1974. We had... Uh, Stephen King publishes his first novel, Carrie. How's that? There you go. Uh, in other Carrie, by the way, the movie. I mean, Sissy Spacek. Oh, mate, that was freaky stuff. Give me. You, you just watch the last ten minutes. Forget the rest of the movie. Uh, yeah. With like, dropping the blood or not, it's like yeah, she goes completely off the roll. So uh, there you go. Anyway, yeah. continue. Uh, yeah. People magazine uh, first issue released in the US with Mia Farrow on the cover. So there you go. People yep. magazine. Which doesn't exist over here anymore, hasn't for quite some time. Uh, in terms of technology, the MRI, Magnetic res Resonance Imaging, was developed in the USA. Uh, for those who have had MRIs, they're fun. They're lots of fun. They're giant magnets that just go around in circles. Uh, get them done all the time. Um, just quickly, the show's called Pennyworth, the Alfred show, so there you go. Yeah, right. I did hear of it, but never saw it, so well done, whoever yeah. that was. Continue on. Uh, in in ar archaeology, um, Lucy is the title that they gave this almost complete hominid skeleton uh, over three million years old, and she was discovered in Africa. So, and not Toto's Africa, but the real Africa. <laughs> and I tell you what, she was looking a lot better than some of the chicks I've gone at. No, we shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> you know. oh my God. Sorry, it's all good. Just I can't read what I just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm gonna get it. Speaking of the Joker, oh, I'm gonna get it now. Oh, my God. Anyway. Uh, all right, and for the real nerds, pocket calculators started to appear in shops. Uh, the crew of, of uh, Skylab returned to Earth after 84 days. Bad daggy. Bad daggy. Um, Henry Heimlich describes the Heimlich maneuver as a possible treatment for choking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the universal product code is scanned for the very first time uh, in Ohio. So barcode technology. Do you know what the first? Can anyone? I'll let this, put this out to everyone. Can anyone tell me what the first thing that was barcoded and scanned was? Was it a product, a car, a person? I don't know. If you watch Terminator, Sarah Connor Chronicles, they barcode the people. So yeah, they did that in. Um, uh, Dark Angel as well. The people with barcoded tattoos. On the back of I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, the Rubik's cube was invented. Um, the I always tried to put the Rubik's cube together, but I couldn't. So in the end, I just did my block. <laughs> anyway, move on. That's one of your jokes. There you go. Go on. Move along. Uh, the first recorded sex tuplets in the world, where all six babies survived. So, wow. There you go. Yeah, was there, you go. there you go. Was it a bottle of Coke? Or Coke? No, no, no milk. Okay. We'll, keep, we'll keep the guesses going. I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, the F 16 Fighting Falcon made its first flight. Oh, back you in um, a plane. Good on you. Last week yeah, we was nothing with planes. Here you go on. Get the planes. Here you go on. Um, oh, here you go. A car one for you, dude. The launch of the, Golf, of the Volkswagen Golf in West Germany. Oh, there you go. That was exciting as a. A fighter jet, uh, yeah. no toilet paper, gum, tobacco. Um, no, it Just was two. actually it was actually a a what? packet of chewing gum. It oh, was a packet of chewing gum. Oh yeah, good there on you, Joel. Well done, dude. You got it right. So there you go. Uh, the population reaches four billion people. No, you got to do evil. Got to do doc evil. It reached four billion people. Doesn't work with people. It works with no. dollars. Uh, and who won Eurovision that year? Do you know? Yeah, it'd be ABBA. Yeah, with what song? Waterloo. Very good. Now, now, ask me how I know that. How do you know that, dude? Well, they're the only people I know who ever won Eurovision, 
and I know they ran one with Waterloo. I could have you could have picked any other year, and I would have had no idea. But I thought oh, I'll take a guess with Abbott and Waterloo. Am I the coolest cat in town, Waterloo? Anyway, move on. Well, Bucks Fizz won in 1980, but that's not a story. I like um, uh, Colin there. Yeah, did they barcode Jeffro's internet connection? Clearly not. So uh, in case you're wondering where Jeffro is tonight, he's uh, not with us. He'll be back next week with a bit of luck. Anyway. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons was designed and released in the US. Otherwise known as, if you're not a gaming person, Dull and Dreary. There you go. <laughs> that is advanced Dull and Dreary. So there you go. There was a gamer who told me that joke, actually. So anyway, yeah. move on. Uh, <laughs> the Rumble in the Jungle, a sports one where the... Um, the fight with uh, Muhammad Ali, who knocks out George Foreman, uh, the heavyweight title. Now, years later, Muhammad Ali, known as the world's greatest fighter, goes on to light the Olympic flame. Uh, the Olympic flame, yeah, in uh, the 1996 Atlanta Olympics. And George Foreman goes on to make a grill. So, as one know, does. two yeah. different roads of people. And one thing about George Foreman, you can always tell he was cooking on games. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> And two particular people were born on the same day in the same year. One is entirely massively famous and the other one is not so much. And that's me and Robbie Williams are born on the same day. So there you go. Same day, same year, different countries. Oh, the guacamole. How's that? There you go. See, so a bit of fame for an otherwise dull, dull show. And, and <laughs> Guys, one dude turned out to be really funny and hysterical, and the other one was in. Yeah. <laughs> oh, golly. All right. All good? All good. All right. Very good. Okay. So uh, I'm going to cover off the sci fi movies of 1974. Now, 1974, as was anything prior to 1977, miserable, dull, or not dull so much, but uh, silly, miserable, unhappy. The world was completely like yeah, all sci fi movies were just like wrist-slitting stuff. I mean, like nothing was ever very happy at all. They were just post-apocalyptic and uh, just the world has just gone to the crapper and all the rest of it. And 1974 was no exception to that. Now, in fact, the first one I'm going to pick up, there's only a handful I'm just going to cover off. Uh, it was an absolute classic. Uh, so you can imagine, like, there's a movie called Zardoz that came out in 1974. Now, you might ask yourself, what the freaking hell is a Zardoz? Well, who cares what it's about? The important thing is to say, well, who was in it? And imagine wearing this in your movies. Look at that. The introduction of the first mankini by Sean Connery. What did they do to James Bond? They dressed him up in a red nappy. Oh, my. <laughs> How embarrassing is that? Seriously. Well, he should have asked for at least a $6 million payout to wear that short of thing around the beaches. <laughs> <laughs> you would have asked for $6 million bucks to be wearing that. I mean, that seriously is mega, mega, mega embarrassing. And that was his main costume for the thing. No one else remembers anything about Zardoz. Than this, than this event. Oh, it's just it's shocking. Anyway, so there you go. Um, uh, in terms of other movies, so hang on, let's just get rid of that. Very good. All right. So in other movies that came out, uh, one of the one of the films that came out was uh, the Terminal Man by uh, written by Michael Crichton, who was renowned for a whole lot of things, actually, including I think Jurassic Park later on down the track, and it's to do with mind control uh, through a computer. So there you go. So uh, to reduce epilepsy. So. You know, the, even back in the 70s, computers were taking people over and doing stuff with their heads. And it was actually directed by Mike Hodges. Now, you might go, who? Who? Thank you. Who? Mike Hodges ended up directing Flash Gordon, right, in 1980, which is an absolutely fantastic movie. You're thinking, oh, this dude's career is going places. And then, he'd up, and then a couple of years later, he ended up doing Morons from Outer Space. I'll tell you <laughs> what. If he was doing Morons on the internet, I reckon you and I would be up here right now. So uh, yeah. there we go. So, yeah, okay, there's, that's how your career sort of goes up and down very, very quickly. <laughs> Dark Star, famous, famous film from the 1970s, absolute classic by Dan O'Bannon and uh, John Carpenter. Um, originally, it was actually done as a student film, and then um, some, I can't remember who it was, it might have been Coppola, it might have been somebody, said, no, no, I bring it out to feature length, and, uh, and they did that, and they exactly didn't really want to do that, but they did it anyway. And it, it was a classic film for showing just how boring space is. These dudes are stuck inside this ship, flying around the galaxy, blowing up unstable star systems and planets and whatever, and they've got, it's the 70s, right? And they've completely lost it. Like they're all smoking dope, and you know they've got the long beards and and all the rest of it. And um, the main alien in the in the show, if you remember this, is actually a beach ball with feet because there was no budget to make this movie, right? So it was actually a beach ball with feet, and uh, it's an absolute classic. So if you know the song Benson, Arizona, I think it's Arizona. Uh, yeah, there's a there's a classic tune from that uh, which you hear at the end of the uh, movie. So Dark Star, if you've never seen it, you got to check it out. Definitely have to switch your brain into the 70s though, because there's a classic 70s movie, Phase Four. Is another one that came out. Now, that was an interesting one. It was all about ants, believe it or not, right? Uh, dudes trying to communicate with ants. Now, I don't mean with the Peebo. 
and I don't mean with a magnifying glass. I mean actually trying to talk to them. Hey, Ant, how you doing? And um, the fascinating thing about the film is how they photograph the ants. So you've got to remember ants are like this big, right? You know, this, 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 this. <laughs> if I do that, it's really big, this big. <laughs> and they had to use special photography just to film these bloody ants. And uh, it's actually quite, quite different, quite uh, unusual. It's set in like a um, scientific research compound or whatever. So if you're a bit of a fan of ants, um, check out the old phase four. It's a little bit different. Definitely not full of like big chase scenes and like spaceships and laser, laser blasters and all that sort of crap. Ants. And it's not like them who are gigantic ants just destroying cities. They're little tiny ants. So there you go. Um, were they dead ants? Dead ants. Yeah, very good. Dead very good. Dead ants. Yeah, very good. And keep uh, yeah, keep your day job. Um, so the Toho Productions in Japan were still rocking on with the Godzilla. They had Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla. So there you go. Two Godzillas punching the absolute bejesus out of each other. And that would have been an example of the dudes in suits smashing the cities, having a whale of a time. How grouse is that? That's the kind of job you go. Imagine saying at a party, you know, what do you do for a living? I'm a receptionist. It's like, oh, what do you do? Oh, yeah, I wait tables. What do you do? Well, I get dressed as this big monster and kick the shit out of all these cities. <laughs> How grass is that? So, well, do, you uh, do you remember when we were doing Sci-Fi Zone, we made mention of the one guy who passed away yep, he was right. last year who did all the Godzillas for many, many years? Yeah, yeah, exactly right. So there you go. So when you walk in walk like this so there you go um another one was invasion from inner earth post-apocalyptic oh my god there's invasions going on remember there's always the world's been taken over by something and somebody and it's just like it's miserable but post-apocalyptic oh you can't get more miserable than that and unfortunately that was a very common theme throughout the 1970s um and funnily enough this could have been actually quite relevant only about uh, three months ago where have all the people gone so there you go and it was actually made for TV, featured Peter Graves, who's uh, quite well known from Mission Impossible, if I'm not mistaken. And how's this? There's a big solar flare and people turn into a powder. You know, they just go like dust. And it's like, wouldn't that be the freakiest thing of all time? So, and but some people obviously, uh, ironically, like the COVID-19, have a genetic resistance to it. So more miserable and depressing stuff. And of all the films that I saw, I couldn't see any of them that were like happy and buzzy and all the rest of it. So it wasn't until Star Wars came out in 77 where things became a bit more uh, interesting and exciting. So there you go. What I find interesting, dude, is you say there's a lot of post-apocalyptic. What about the pre-apocalyptic films? Where were they? <laughs> <laughs> uh, i tell you what. I mean, a lot of filmmakers used to love doing post-apocalyptic. I mean, there was a guy called Donald Jackson. One day we'll talk about his career. Uh, he said he loved doing post-apocalyptic because you could just do anything you want. Go out in the desert, put people, wear, anybody could wear anything, and that's your that's the future of the earth after all the Third World War and all the rest of it. So uh, there you go. So uh, I like that, Jared. Uh, what is it, a school for ants? I suppose it is, actually, so you could argue like that. So um, very, very good. No, I don't know what that reference is, and I can't remember the film. Uh, Zoolander, that's what it is, isn't it, Jared? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, it's very it. Sorry, go on. No, no, you go. Uh, okay, so uh, I like that Colin has said only ants survived the solar flash. I'll tell you a funny story, a true story, right? I was actually working on a film one day. It was actually a feature film, and they had cockroaches in this container, right? Real life, <laughs> millions and billions of the damn things, right? And they're going to use them on the shoot. Anyway, we're out in Ballarat. It was so cold that night, though. They open up the lid, and they're all practically carked right? And we go, well, that doesn't make sense. They're supposed to be able to survive a nuclear war. It's like they couldn't even handle a Ballarat night. So anyway, so uh, there we go. Crazy stuff. So I remember very, when the cockroaches did did work when they were back we were back here in melbourne and it was a freezing cold night so oh yeah we got, we got jocko all right okay so i didn't realize that jocko's with us so jocko if you're uh, for those who don't know who jocko is that's jocko he's over there over there yeah. um jocko if you sign up the stream yard we'll see your name as you post so at least we can uh so we'll work out who you are if you choose to do so if not just put yeah. your name in the post so very very good uh wouldn't wouldn't pre-apocalyptic be a known oh the, uh, it's the word apocalyptic is just a tongue twister. Wouldn't pre apocalyptic be any non post apocalyptic? A words that have been hard to spell. Hard to say. Yeah, it is. It's a pain in the ass, isn't it? Anyway. All right. So there you go. So that was 1974. Anything else you want to cover from 1974? Yep. We've got a few movies that were were classics that we believe it, uh, that I believe are classics, and a few that were the originals to what was now remakes over the years. So we'll start with. Blazing Saddles, that's a very good one for most people. They all love that. Uh, the Godfather Part 2, Towering Inferno, Young Einstein, the Young Chester, Einstein? Texas Chainsaw. Young Einstein was made uh, in the 80s. Sorry, yeah, that was 88. Uh, Young Frankenstein. Bloody <laughs> 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 Trying to get through this kind of quick. Uh, Young Frankenstein, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, The Taking of Fallon 123, The Longest Yard, which those two have been remade. Um, 
in terms of James Bond, The Man with the Golden Gun, uh, another remake, The Great Gatsby, um, uh, Murder on the Orient, Orient Express. Um, Very good. Airport, 1975. And they're probably the most uh, in terms of... Uh, and the fun one, Benji, one of Benji's appearances uh, in terms of feature film. Uh, in terms of television... There well, was. Um, you have Airport 75 and Airport 77 and then Airport 80, the Concord. Showing those movies on in flight uh, entertainment, it's just grass fun. So uh, there you go. Yeah. Move on. That, that and Snakes on a Plane. Um, uh, TV shows that started in that year were uh, Happy Days, uh, Little House on the Prairie. Um, Someone has said Earthquake, Earthquake was grass because it was in Sense Around, which was considered like. You know, the big, huge, uh, what was to become, I guess, Dolby and THX decades later. But, uh, yeah, Earthquake was really good with all the models and stuff. No, I had a whale of a time with that. So, anyway, continue on. Uh, Planet of the Apes, the TV series. Uh. Um, Shazam, which is based on the Captain Marvel, not female Captain Marvel, the DC Captain Marvel Shazam. Uh, the Brady Bunch finished that year. Uh Here's Lucy, which was one of the last Lucy shows finished in 1974. Um, and that's pretty we'll much about it. We're going to go. Uh, it's definitely 9.30, so we're going to buzz off, leave you to it. See you next week. Bring this energy that you got now for next week because uh, it'll be another exciting show. It's Wednesday night. It's nerdy night. You're with us. It's absolutely fantastic, and we're going to leave you all to, to it. So in the interim, make sure you ah, stay nerdy. Okay. Er